Hello, welcome back to the Project Hercules Diaries and I want to talk a bit today about Gearbox Design by Mr. Bob. But before we get into that, um, have a look at this. We've been down to uh, Fair Spares in uh, Norton Keynes and bought uh, quite a decent uh, clutch. It's, uh, it's a dry clutch, heavy duty thing with a, with a belt primary drive. So that, that will take care of, the, of that side of the, the drive chain. And then this in concept is what we plan to do with the gearbox. So by... Um, by running this in my finger, hopefully it should be very obvious how it plans to how we plan to use it. We've got two sprockets, one on the left side of the bike, one on the right side of the bike. The clutch would be on the left hand side here. So with the with the clutch um, engaged, then that central shaft will be turning and that central dog will be turning. Neither of the sprockets are locked onto the shaft. When we select the low speed, we move this dog here across and that locks this gear, this sprocket to the shaft. They're locked together onto the shaft. Uh, neutral would be in the centre and I'm planning to use a hand change for neutral. Uh, and then on the right, move the dogs to the right and we lock the other sprocket, that one there, to the shaft. Um, so that obviously needs to be put into a gearbox but if you've not uh, spotted it yet, those two sprockets are not very far apart and I would rather like a, a back wheel that's bit wider than the bicycle tyre so that means we need to use a longer main shaft that needs to be made and we need some mechanism to to shift the dog backwards and forwards so <laughs> Mr Bob's passing me a um uh, a, a, a sheet that is drawn up for the, the longer main shaft dimensions so it's very very similar to the Norton Commando main shaft that this is based around and there's a possibility that just to, to save a bit of time and effort that one of the gearbox manufacturers that makes the standard component uh, where the tooling has been set up could potentially make this for us and just save a bit of time if not we'll just have to make our own main shaft we did think about taking a pair of these and cutting them in half and joining them together you know with a with a press fit sleeve or getting them electron beam welded together but i think if we can if we can make it from a single piece uh, and of, of the right hardness because gearboxes need to be quite hard that would be much better so to the drawing then as you can see there it's been drawn by uh, bob collett uh, friend and neighbor we're on version two already issue two because uh, we've come up with a, a couple of alternate designs so the left hand side of this drawing here is is if you like issue one the original design and the right hand side is a revised design because on the right hand side we've managed to slim the box down and not the the, the plates on the end of the box are quite a bit thinner than on the left hand side and I quite like the smaller box so you can see here we've got two dogs and the dogs are linked together by uh, the selector forks so we've got two selector forks selector forks look like this the selector fork goes onto the dog like that and moves the dog backwards and forwards obviously we've got two dogs because we've got the longer shaft and we've got um, a, a longer distance between these two dogs here so onto this shaft we'll have the two dogs like that on the same shaft and we'll lock them together with this piece here so they, these are the dogs looking side on there's two of them one of them needs to be shortened down a bit and by moving this shaft backwards and forwards that moves the two dogs backwards and forwards to engage them on the left side or the right side um, there's the clutch there's the low speed and there's the high speed drive sprockets on the very end is the mechanism to push the push rod through to release the clutch which is one of these widgets here so as, as you turn as you pull the cable it just pushes that center piece there's a, a little bit of a screw inside um, and that should work out nicely and as, as usual bob's worked out everything so this top is a 42 rear sprocket that we're planning to use and on the front, we've got a 17 and a 25 tooth. That's the radius of the 75, sorry, of the, of the 17, and that's the 25. So you, you get an indication of the chain runs, what they would be over the approximate distance between the front and the back wheel. Um, this mechanism here will be on standoffs to carry the, the mechanism to release the clutch, uh, and this will be um, the, the gear change movement either front and back or we can rotate that up and down because I quite like to have a hand change and then mounting the box itself um, this is looking end on and these would be the mounting plates we've got a couple of options there but the preferred option is to machine the center of the 
the, the box so it mounts in the same distance apart as the back of the engine this is the center line of the engine it's also the center line of the box the um, clutch lines up quite nicely and we've got room in here for a, a dyna start sprocket sorry no forget that that's at the, that's at the engine end uh, there's, there's room at the engine end for a, a, a dyna start sprocket so it's all, all coming together quite nicely it's all been very well thought out and the final thing I'll show you is the metal for the gearbox which has arrived and is patiently waiting in the shed the shed did someone say the shed yes we'll pop down the shed this is uh, the other shed uh, just while i'm in here just walked in just noticed that we've got this this is the oil pump this is the bottom of the uh, the timing side because we need to mount the oil pump and do the drills but you can see now how the oil pump made uh, engages with the the worm on the end of the crankshaft but i digress what we came to look at was the gearbox and look how exciting is this this is a standard and sorry standard there's nothing standard about it this is a custom one-off gearbox case for a two-speed gearless transmission for my bike and as you can see it's just uh, at the moment it's three slices of aluminium that i've purchased and we're going to bore this out sort of eccentrically it won't it won't be um, a central bore all of that is on the drawing that uh, is on the uh, start of this video. So that, that's the metal that's arrived. It's quite a nice grade aluminium. Um, I, I, I can't remember what it is off the top of my head, but I'll put it in the comments. And if anybody would like a copy of any of the drawings, um, they're not top secret by any stretch. I'm quite happy to scan them in and uh, put a link to them somewhere. So if, if you do want to see that, let me know. As usual, thanks for watching. Uh, it's a bit of a longer update. Apologies for the ramblings, but there's a fair bit to cover today and a lot of work's been done. Um, thanks very much. Speak to you all soon.